Hey guys, what's going on? I am doing a video breakdown of the 2022 Georgia State um, Phoenix Trinity sectional match. Um, it went okay. We're going to get right into it. I'm not going to waste a bunch of time, but the uh, purpose of this is to learn. One, for me to digest what I'm doing. I've kind of been looking at these. And then also for you, the viewer, to learn. Um, I've had this problem occur before, but couldn't really identify where it was coming from. Uh, it even was harder at this match for me to identify it. I kind of felt it. Um, but the purpose of USPSA, like you need to look at your match footage, you need to break it down, you need to be extraordinarily critical of yourself, identify not the, just the problems, but how you can fix those problems. So um, that is what we're going to do. Uh, this was purely a mental uh, mindset thing. It wasn't a shooting fundamentals or any of that stuff. It all stemmed from what my conscious mind was focusing on versus what it needed to be focusing on. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. So going into this, this match, um, the big fatal error that I think I made was I thought I, I just going to relax and shoot good points. And relax and shoot good points is not a process. Okay, um, I can have that goal in mind of like, ah, I'd, like to, I'd like to shoot good points. However, if that becomes my main goal, I can go through and do what I did and over-confirm every single thing that I'm shooting. Now, not over-confirm my dot or the shots that I'm taking, but leaving my eyes on the target for too long. Um, you will see multiple times I will call it out where the gun goes off, off, and I'm like, whoop, and dragging away. And it's, it's maybe a tenth to two tenths of a second, but that will consistently add up. Um, and that is you not committing to the information that's already there. This is something I teach. This is something I preach, not something I put into action the other day because it's very hard when you get results oriented and you think, oh, I want to get good hits. You want to check your work while it's happening. That is not the time to check the output. Put the input in, put the right input in, move on. Don't worry about that output until you get done, right? Um, okay, so let's get right into it. The first one we are starting with is actually going to be stage eight Foley's, and this was a really good stage. Um, very technical, very tricky. Um, so without further ado, we will get, wait, hopefully I didn't just pause the recording. Let's make sure. Okay, we're good. I wanted to, I, sometimes I pause the recording and I don't want to do that. All right, here we go. Oh, sorry. Now, here we go. Are you ready? Stop talking to yourself. Okay, so um, there's a couple very obvious errors in there, in my opinion, um, that we will talk about specifically, but I'll break it down as we watch it in slow motion and just uh, give it a, a fair shake. Um, just so we know, the hit factor on the stage was a 5.8. I had 24 alphas, 6 charlies, um, 23.58 was the time. So not horrible, but there's a couple mistakes we're going to make out here. So off the draw, I felt pretty good moving into position. Running, you know, I wasn't slow to the draw or anything. Uh, the way I entered this position, I think, was very well done. I waited long enough for this foot to settle and me kind of be rising up. Uh, maybe an argument could be made that I overconfirmed my sight picture a little bit here, but, you know, on a hard cover like that in the move, the first target, I'm okay with that. What I'm not okay with is what's about to happen. The gun has gone off. My round has left my gun. Why are my eyes still on that target? And the answer is what I said in the intro of the video. I wanted to confirm my hits there, and rather than confirming them based on the input into the gun, I also wanted to over-confirm and go, wait, did the input lie to me? I had all the information I wanted, and often when we think like this, it adds a lot more stress to our shooting and slows us down. It's kind of a weird thing to think about, but the more you let go of wanting to see those hits or whatever, the more you will just flawlessly kind of move through. What's weird is as I got done too, because I was so busy checking my work, um, I was completely ignoring the input of my gun, what my gun was actually telling me. I was so worried about seeing my hits. Um, this seems like a rookie beginner mistake, uh, but e it's easy to be susceptible to, especially when you think, ah, I just got to relax and shoot points. No, you got to follow a process. Not bad. A little hard exit out of that position, but that's kind of comes with the territory. Good footwork here. Again, gun has fired. Where are Garrett's eyes? On target. That's a delay. 
Each one of those, you think, ah, it's a tenth, two tenths of a second. Well, that adds up to almost half a second just wasted right there. It absolutely matters. Commit to the work. This is a big thing for me when I'm going to nationals. I'm going to tell myself, commit, commit to your work, right? Don't, that doesn't mean don't listen to what the gun is telling you, but the targets are not telling you anything. Don't worry about them right now. The gun should be telling you everything you need to know. So, yeah. Again, that little bit of delay right there is maybe a tenth of a second. Um, it's a lot more obvious when I was an A-class shooter and I shot a match like this. Harder to spot when, you're, uh, when I'm moving a little bit faster because my processing speed's there. But that's wasted process. That's process where I'm going fire, fire, settle, okay, I'm good, and moving on, right? That's useless. The gun already told me everything I needed to know. Fire, fire, move on immediately. The same thing there, just delaying. Then it makes you lag in thinking about what am I doing next because you're thinking about what hits did I have on that? Was that two alpha? And I literally specifically remember in my conscious mind going, I think that was two alpha, good job. Not what I need to be thinking about, right? I should already be reloading and on to the next target. I'm not going to go back and reshoot that target. So it is what it is. Good settling there. I'm on the heels or kind of where I want to be. Not flat-footed, but just not on my tippy toes. Um, just kind of transitioned and shot a little too soon. And just barely missed that steal too. So that caused me to kind of have to jump up and go. Good entry. I have to come to a little bit of a hard stop to, you know, chill out through this middle. Take one shot at the swinger, and I'm like, ah, uh, not worth the time. So I move on to here, and I remember, okay, I've got a contingency built in for this. I don't know why I reloaded. Again, that's a little bit of the conscious mind slipping away and going like, how many rounds did I shoot here? I might as well just reload. Probably a previous stage plan slipping into my, my brain that I've practiced. Um, so, you know, not the end of the world. I make the best of, of, of it. Gun has cycled and is done firing, and Garrett is still looking at target. Gun has cycled. That one's a little bit better, not as much of a delay, but still. And I did end up getting two alpha on that swinger. Okay, so <laughs> as you can see, riddled with uh, mistakes, and it is what it is. But the biggest mistake about that stage is on all those targets, that added up easily to probably two seconds you know, roughly two seconds of a tenth here, two tenths here, a tenth there, you know, that could add up to a second and a half, two tenths, you know, it just adds up and it's useless. I should already know, I should have already called the shot. So that comes from being a little bit of uh, careful shooting. So again, hit factor on that was a 5.8, 2358 time, 24 alphas and six Charlies. Uh, that's actually a lot of Charlies to drop for how many, how long I was confirming my shots. So it bears no, like once those shots are gone, there's nothing that your vision can do besides go, ah, oh, crap. That's all. That's literally all that stands to do for you. So once you've taken those shots, move on. That's going to be a big, big focus in my brain is commit to the shots, move on for nationals. Okay. Um, next one. Let's take a look at this. This is stage seven, Oasis, I believe. Yes. Are you ready? Stand by. Okay, um, so overall not too bad. Actually, I had a really good, um, this stage was a little bit, I think when we watch it in slow motion, we'll see that it was a little bit more me shooting predictively. Um, not quite enough to save me on this because I did hit a no shoot. Uh, just so we know, hit factor on this was a four, five, uh, two, one, zero. I had 16 alpha, uh, four Charlies, two deltas, uh, which were would have been non-penalties, one no shoot. And zero no penalty mics. So I got all my shots off on the uh, the drop turner. The two deltas that I scored were the non penalty. What would have been the non penalty mics. So, you know, not too bad. It would have been better to get all my alphas on there, but it is what it is. Okay, let's watch it in slow mo. Okay, so first things first. You know, good here. Let's see if I stall out. Less stall there. I did stall a little bit, but I was more committed to what was happening there. And you can see like. As soon as the gun fires, sorry, I went back a little too far. As soon as that gun fires, bang, bang, I'm kind of 
Still behind the gun, but not for long, right? My eyes have left the target there, so better. Bang, bang. Eyes were off that target pretty quick. Bang, bang. And I'm on to the next target. So still a little bit of overconfirmation, but we're talking about maybe a tenth of a second to, you know, 0 0.05 of a second, whatever that would be. Uh, five hundredth of a second? I don't know. Um, so a lot better, but not great. So breakdown, good sprint. I'm going to show you why I hit the no-shoot here. Good movement in there. And there's going to be one key thing that is the reason I think I hit the no-shoot. And that key reason is this right here. Um, you can see, since both knees are bent, that I could have my center of gravity on my heel right here. And it would not have cost me anything. It actually would have just gained me stability. And when you're shooting at a small no-shoot no that far away, that little bit of stability could be the difference between your round hitting here or your round dropping down low. So footwork um, should have been planted on this heel. I wasn't as leaned out as I thought I needed to be, so I could have just planted down right there. Confirmed my work a little bit there. That one was better because I went right into my reload, so not horrible. Settling down. Eyes are up. Gun is ready. That's pretty solid. I do check the crap out of my work here, though. So that gun is fired. Look how long I sat there and looked at that. That's easily two-tenths of a second. This was pretty good. Brantley helped me out with this by saying, get the gun up, tap it, then fire. And it actually made it pretty easy. And I nicked uh, two delta and one alpha. So a delta on the way in and an alpha on the way out. Or delta, alpha, alpha, delta. And this is, again, me just not shooting predictively, not shooting aggressively. All right. So like you can see, several mistakes in there. You know, nothing that's end of the world. That was actually one of my better stages had I uh, not hit the tag that no-shoot. That really did hurt me. And uh, it was literally just footwork. And um, yeah, yeah, nothing. I mean, it is what it is. Sometimes you're going to hit no-shoots. That's just life. All right. The next one is uh, stage six. We'll watch this one. This is a tough one. Okay, so you can still see a little bit of delay in what I'm doing there. And that's, that's one thing I don't love. Um, and that is, in my opinion, that's like the difference between GM and, and M is like the GMs cannot delay on things. They can have that maybe happen once in a stage and it's not the end of the world, but they have to commit to every shot they take. And that, like this was a decent M performance from the way it turns out. Like it looks like, I mean, we'll see his scores roll in, but this will probably be middle of the road M. Nothing to write home about, but nothing like incredible. Um, so people could slip up and this could be a win or people could shoot the right way. And this is like, man, uh, so with GM and especially with watching Brantley Merriam, who I was squatted with, like, there's just no lack of commitment. It's just like hundred percent. I'm committed. I I'm reading what the gun's telling me. I'm listening to the gun. And if the gun tells me something felt wrong or the input of the gun was wrong, I fix it there. I don't wait for the target to talk to me again. This seems so like common knowledge but you really can't pick up on it unless you slow it down and really look and then think about like, what was my mindset in this? So this stage I had 24 alpha, two Charlie, um, and I ran it 1894, six, six hit factor. So honestly, not horrible, but I shot one area out of sequence and I just, again, over confirmed some shots on a stage like this. It wouldn't be as big of a deal. In other words, I'd be okay with falling behind a little bit because this is kind of like a go here, shoot these, go here, shoot these. And it's hard to flow. Um, but yeah, yeah, just uh, so let's watch this one in slow motion. Looked all right on that. Again, shot is fired. Look how long it takes me to get my attention off of that. You can tell I'm thinking about it. Was that good? Did I shoot that well? The gun has already told me and I wasn't listening. Not too bad there. Again, I can still see a little bit of hesitation, but obviously slow-mo is going to make it, you know, way worse than it really is. This was a good, I think I handled this one pretty well. This is one that absolutely deserves 
the attention that it got. And I would even say on a, on a shot like that, how tiny that partial was, like you might over confirm and try and look and see your hits on that one. It's going to waste time because the, the gun should be telling you. But a target like that is a little bit more understandable why you get drawn in. Um, these other targets are not. So I shoot this portion out of sequence. I meant to shoot this target, this target, then transition to the one barrel over here and one here and one there and then exit. So I could have stayed moving the whole time. I didn't. This probably cost me a second and a half. See how long I was sitting on that target with my gun thinking about whether or not those were good hits? Need to hit it and leave it, man. Hit it and quit it. The old verbiage, right? Once you shot your two and you call those two shots good, staring at it doesn't do you any good. Any length of time, it doesn't do you any good. It's all because we're results focused rather than process focused. Then you're gonna go to war with your subconscious. That should have been split a little bit faster. It's me hunting and looking for those points. That's what just makes those positions take that much longer, right? It's just those little things that make the position take that much longer. Okay, um, so yeah, uh, again, that one's not like a, it's not a horrible, horrible end of the world thing, but again, it's just constantly shoot, shoot, then transition, rather than shoot, shoot, transition. Um, so anyway, next one is stage five, um, and we'll just play this one out. This was a contained disaster. Not at all how I meant to deal with the steel. All right. So hit factor on this one was not good. Uh, 25 alpha, 5 Charlie, 2 deltas, uh, 2186 time. So this is, I don't want to say it's my worst stage, but it's probably my worst stage, <laughs> uh, which is what it is. Let's break it down and see why some of the things that happened, happened. Okay, so out of the draw, I did a good job. I think this was one thing I executed well. Brantley was helping me say, like, hey, dude, you're taking shuffle snaps every time you shoot. So getting those headshots was solid. And again, that's another target where it's kind of like, it's not the end of the world to overconfirm, but again, your gun, you should get used to reading off of your gun. All right, a little bit of overconfirmation there. Decent footwork to shuffle and get me in front of this. Gun up, ready to shoot. Again tad bit of overconfirmation. That's that overconfirmation. That gun is fired, recoil settled, right? Boom, recoil settled, and then I'm looking at my next position. That is overconfirmation. That is thinking about what those hits look like on that target when they've already been sent. If something was jacked up in that process, I should have just sent another round and then left. Now this, my intention was steel, steel to get the big ones out of the way. Somehow I hit big steel, little steel. I was over confirming. I remember literally over confirming on pretty much every one of these targets. I remember thinking consciously about wanting to get to this one sooner rather than later because it disappeared. Then I remember thinking steel, and then I went, oh shit, I forgot to shoot this one twice, so I need another round on that. Another reload, I thought just to be safe because I had missed so many things. I was like, ah, I don't want to run out of ammo. So much over confirmation on these. You can see my eyes and my gun are moving at the same time because my eyes want to hang out and confirm my hits. Okay, so most of my mistakes for this match, guys, were 110% visual mistakes. All right, moving on to stage four, Peaches. Um, I switched my stage plan up for this one. Uh, you know, it wasn't the end of the world. It was just I knew there was one spot that I was going to forget to do what I needed to do, and I sure enough, I forgot to do what I needed to do. It is what it is. Let's take a look at this one. See the over-confirming there. Even in fast motion, you can see it. See how long I... It's just that delayed second. Missed my position. Didn't mean to do a reload there, but I just committed and did it anyway. Anyway. 
Good. A little bit better there at the end, but not amazing. Okay, so that stage right there. 23 alpha for Charlie in a 22.78. Okay, so again, without over confirming, I already I got my hits. So why am I sitting there looking at it? I didn't change. Like there wasn't makeup shots there that all of a sudden changed. All I did was waste time. If I would have had confidence in the way I was shooting and just been like, yep, good, 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 and left, um, I probably would have shaved off at least two seconds there, right? And if you do the math there, and let's say we take our, our time. This is always interesting to do, guys. So you take your 23 alphas. You multiply that, obviously, by 5. That's 115 points plus uh, 4 Charlies. Let's see. 4 times 5. 16. Yeah, so 16 points plus 115. That equals 131 points divided by your time, 22.78. Um, you know, that bumped me up to a 5.7 hit factor. Just shaving that little bit of time off if I did that math right, which I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, that bumped that much time off for me, right? Um, and that's that's a big deal. Like, that, that, that little bit of jump in hit factor helps, you know, 5.7. Um, to, to shave that much time off. My guess is it was even more time than that. With all the mistakes and everything, this should have been done in like 18 seconds. Um, and if I would have done uh, this in 18 seconds, 115 uh, divided by 18.00, it would have been a 7-2 hit factor. So that time, that little time jump right there makes such a, such a huge difference for me but you know, get that way higher hit factor. So it is what it is. Let's watch it in slow motion. So draw, step. I think I took this shot. Uh, you know, it just missed off to the right. I think it was an, a visual thing. Good. Look, see, gun has settled, and my eye... I actually start transitioning the gun before my eyes do. Over-confirming. Over-confirming. Makes me slow to look to my next position. Still makes me think. I remember thinking consciously about those shots and those hits. Good trigger work. Look past that, that thing, probably because I was thinking about my hits. Have to stop, come back. I mean, that's easily a, a half a second there being, like, nice. Probably closer to a second. Then this reload mess up, I would already be shooting right now. So this is another second and a half, right? So once your conscious mind comes unraveled because you're, you're doing something you don't normally do in your process, it will really jack with you. I mean, it's good to be able to fall back on, like, good marksmanship and stuff and not just, you know, dumpster fire the stage. But it's super important to start understanding, like, why did that happen? Why did this mistake happen? What, did I, what do I need to do in order to make this not happen? Now, this last part of the stage flows a little bit better. I overconfirmed for sure a little bit there. And I just remember trying to score, like in my head, I was trying to score the targets as I was shooting them. Um, and there's a big difference between scoring the targets as you're shooting them and just calling your shots. You know, I, I didn't have, like I said, I didn't really have any makeup shots on this stage besides on the steel. And my hits were completely fine, right? 23 and 4 is totally acceptable for a stage like this. What's not acceptable is the amount of time that was wasted on each one of those things, right? By not shaving that time off the back, it's a, you know, 27-round uh, stage. So there's 27, you know, roughly, you know, 12 or so times that I'm going to be doing that, right? Easily. Um, plus on steel. But like on these paper targets, boom, boom, transitioning will cut off so much time. So, yep, it is what it is. I handled the steel pretty well on that one, in my opinion. Um, that last little portion was a lot, a lot less over confirmation. Okay, so moving on. Here is stage three. This one was okay, but this shot right here does such a good job of just perfectly illustrating what I'm talking about. Okay, so uh, time on this one was a 14.26, 22 alpha for Charlie's. Um, yeah, not, not bad. You know, this wasn't horrible. But what I want to do is I want to watch this one, and I want you to see exactly what my eyes do and how bad this is. Here we go in slow motion, right? Good draw. 
get the trigger prepped, everything, I should have fired right here, right? So I lost some time by not predictive, predictively shooting this and having faith in myself, right? Watch this. Okay, so my feet already start to lift, right? You can actually see right there when I do that. You see my foot shift? My foot shifts in preparation to suck myself out of that position. Look how long I leave my eyes and my head there after that gun is fired. That's the two tenths of a second I'm talking about. And it sticks out like a, a sore thumb right there because you can literally see the reciprocation of the slide and you, you can see I'm kind of like, it's almost like I'm look, I like, I know I should be turning my head, but I, I'm keeping my eyes there and delaying it. That will jack everything up. Once you shot those two shots, man, you got to commit. Do a good job getting magazine where it needs to be. Indexing off that target. You know, I'm okay with that one because it's such a hard lean of having a little bit of overconfirmation. That was a good transition. So that one right there that's about to come up, you can literally perfectly see the difference between this transition, right, where I'm like with the gun versus this one where it's like eyes go there and the gun just comes right after it. That is not overconfirming, and that is seeing what you need to see. That one, you can see my eye switch really fast, right? If you watch when I shoot the lower one, pop, 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 pop. That's because I'm so confident in shooting that close-ass target that my brain's like, you don't need to call your, you don't need to watch your shots on this one. And that was over confirmation. It makes a huge difference, guys. It makes a huge difference. All right. Now we are going to um, this stage right here. This is stage two, the pony. Are you ready? Stand by. All right, so what you guys will see is like this one I did a good job of just like committing to my shots on the close targets, but then on those far targets, you're going to see I over, like I sit there and I just stay there for too long. So part of it in my mental process is going to be like, hey, even though those are far away, treat them the same as the one that you come up and you're like easy points and you roll away from it. It's got to be the same mentality of boom, boom, easy points, move on. All right, so hit factor on this one was a 7-1. 25 Alpha, 5 Charlies, eh, you know, it's 19, uh, 1959. Um, I lost some time here, but it's nothing horrific in my opinion. Um, let's watch it in slow-mo. Oh, whoops. So good draw. I decided to step to that left target. Probably could have fired a little bit more into position. That's probably, again, a little bit of overconfirmation. Again, eyes just dwelling there. It honestly doesn't even matter what the gun's doing. My head tells me what my eyes are doing. So look how long. After that shot's fired, boom, my eyes should immediately be turning over here. And you can see how long my head stays. See that? See how long? It's like, ah, and then I look away, right? That's a problem. It's not even what my gun is doing or what my body language is doing. It's what my eyes are doing. I don't want to look away, ah, right? Still dragging on that confirming. That one was a little bit better. Still a little bit of drag. Not horrible. Over confirming. Just leaving my eyes there for too long. Again, that slight delay of my eyes being like, okay, and moving off of said target. Death by a thousand little mistakes, man.
Hard to tell what my eyes are doing up there, but I would imagine it's a little bit of the same. Okay, our last stage. Let's take a good old look. This is actually my first stage. Um, and you're really going to see how this set the tone for the entire day. You're going to see a whole lot of overconfirmation. Leaving eyes in the wrong place. Yeah, so like I said, um, when you go like full speed, you can't really see it, but it's definitely there. So uh, 18 alpha, four Charlies, and 1281 was my time. Oh, I'm sorry, we missed a stage. That's incorrect. This is stage 11, Cheetah. Um, I'll see if I can find the other. Uh, this was actually a really good stage. I don't know where that one went, but that uh, stage one was actually, I shot pretty well. A little bit of over confirmation, but not bad. Um, this one was 23 Alpha, 3 Charlie, and a 1460. 12 would have been a good time for this one. 1460 was my actual time. So let's watch it nice and slow motion. Let's count how many times Garrett leaves his eye on the target after the gun's shot. And one drag. Uh, that one was better. I didn't overconfirm as much on that one. Again, I don't even want to call this over-confirming because it's not over-confirming. It's just leaving your eyes there and inspecting work. And it just gives you one more thing to do that doesn't change the outcome of the stage. Left my eyes. Eyes got a little left behind there, not as bad. Eyes left behind. A little bit better there. My guess is it's really going to come out here. Yep, eyes left behind. And eyes left behind. Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to be moving and reloading. I forgot. Eyes left behind. Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to be looking at this target. Do you hear the difference between that transition, that target transition? I know they're really, really close, but it's not like boom, 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 boom. It was... Boom, 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 like dragging right over into it. That's the difference. And it's on those close targets that I did the right way. The far targets are the ones that I uh, kind of didn't do it the right way. Okay, so, um, yeah, that was, uh, that was rough. You know, doing that in that short amount of time, getting that low of a hit factor on a stage like that with those that the time that that took, um, no bueno, right? That kills you. Uh, let me see real quick if I can pull up the other one. Let's see if it made it, or if I just forgot to download it. And if we did, it is what it is. It's not a big, not a big deal. Um, but I share that with you guys just to show how important it is to, you know, identify these mistakes because if you might not be able to identify what the heck was that, like why was I shooting that way, why did that feel that way, um, it can be kind of tough to to see that, I guess. Um, oh, here it is. Perfect. I'll pull this one in. We can take a look at it. Okay. So this right here, this was Tattletail, stage one. Actually went pretty well. Okay, so there was a little bit of our confirmation on that, but nothing crazy, okay? Um, and I'll, I'll show you the couple where they did overcome, over, where I did overconfirm. But it wasn't anything crazy. So 18 Alpha 4 Charlie, 1281 time, a 796 hit factor. That ended up being pretty decent. And I think it will stay pretty decent. Okay, so on the draw, good, right? You see how my eyes immediately, after that gun's fired, you can just see my eyes like almost immediately. Boom, boom, and I'm off the target. Like there's a little bit of drag, but even on that one, I'm like pretty much just off to the races. Uh, still over confirming a little or letting my eyes hang out for a little bit, but not nearly as bad. That one was a good example of me just being like, boom, boom, off to the races. Boom, boom. That was solid. Boom, boom. Heads turning. A little over confirmation there, but not too bad. See how quickly I shot on that transition? That's because I got my eyes there sooner. Now, here I do a little bit of over confirming. You know, on those, that's okay. 
you can see I'm kind of like trying to check my work and make sure I have my alphas on those hard covers. Honestly, I'll give up the time there. It's not the end of the world. That's going to be the difference between high-level GMs and, you know, maybe high M is like they'll overconfirm on those versus the guys that will shoot a little bit more aggressively. Cool. So long story short, guys, uh, there's a lot of stuff to break down in this. The biggest mistakes that I think I had were all visual. It was just my mindset. It was me not having good control of my conscious mind. Um, and, you know, it's okay. Overall, we'll see where I end up. I don't anticipate that to be uh, one of the best matches I've ever shot by any means. It's not, but it was okay. Um, one thing I did that I want to say that's a positive from all of this is I learned how to contain disaster, right? I had several stages where things fell apart, and I got practice at, ooh, okay, things are kind of not going smoothly. Contain the stage. Keep that hit factor uh, a little bit higher. Don't just rush through it and drop your hit factor way the hell down, okay? So um, not a bad match, but I just left my eyes hanging around for too long. Um, it would be interesting to go through and count how much time here uh, was lost on each of these stages. And what's crazy, guys, is no points were gained. I mean, like, I just gave up time for no good reason, right? The shots had already left my gun. So what were my eyes doing, right? Um, and it's hard because you want to look for that, that mech, you know, the mess up, but the mess up was there in front of you. As you shoot that first shot and you're shooting your second shot, if that second shot didn't feel good, you should immediately send that third shot and just be off to the races. Um, this is something that I do in local matches, but when the pressure's on and I'm like, I don't, I don't want to mess anything up, um, it's kind of shooting gently or trying to just, just make sure everything's perfect. But it really, when you break it down and you think about it logically, the rounds had already left the gun. I shot good points on all these stages. I mean, I had a couple of stages, but you know, um, when you get done, 18 and 4, Alpha Charlie, uh, 23 Alpha, 3 Charlie, 25 Alpha, 5 Charlie, 22 Alpha, 4 Charlie, 23 Alpha, 4 Charlie, 25 Alpha, 5 Charlie, and 2 Deltas. You know, okay, a little bit of points there, but that's not the end of the world. Uh, 24 and 2, 18, 4, 2, which were non -penal would have been non-penalty mics, right? 24 and 6. So, like, points were not the issue here. The thing is over leaving my eyes on the target and wasting a bunch of time was the issue. And that, that does add up quickly, very quickly. I was able to watch Brantley shoot, um, and he was easily, on average, four seconds ahead of me on stages. And it's like, you know, you two-tenths, you over-confirm here, two-tenths, you over-confirm here, two-tenths, you over-confirm here, and it makes you shoot gentle and not be as confident, right? So for me, mentally, I'm going to practice really not over, like, leaving my eyes on the target. Once I've shot those two, get off that target, dump it. Plenty of drills I can do to do this. Um, mainly, it's an issue for me at long distances. Bop, 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 leaving those targets like that. Takes a lot of guts, but it's something worth uh, practicing. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this, this content helps you and gets you guys ready for uh, your next match.